Now, I don't think I fully realized until recently, but there have been a lot of great fly patterns to come out of Pennsylvania. Flies like Hiram Brobe's Henryville Special or Bob Clouser's Clouser Minnows. And what about my favorite dry fly of all time, the elk hair caddis. Al Troth was from Pennsylvania. Now, I think he did create the fly on a trip out west, but yeah, I wouldn't call that a Pennsylvania fly anyway. Now, there's one more pretty famous fly fisherman in Tyre from Pennsylvania. I'm talking about James Lysingring. This guy was pretty much a legend among wet fly tires of the Pocono region. He published The Art of Tying the Wet Fly in 1941. He was a mentor to Pete Heide, famous for his flimps, which were very similar to a lot of Lysingring's wet flies, which were kind of of the wingless variety, looked a little bit like some of the old North Country spiders. And I want to do one of these for you today. It's called Lysingring's Black Gnat. Now, it's a really simple tie. It's got a starling hackle and the body made out of wrapped turkey fibers uh, from a dark turkey tail or a crow body feather or even just black floss if you want to go even simpler. Now, for any of you tires out there from Pennsylvania, either the Poconos or Lehigh Valley area, make sure you stick around to After the Tie. I'm going to be talking about a class Will Daskal is going to be offering at Northampton Community College starting this summer. Okay, let's tie this. James Lysingring's wingless wet fly called the Black Gnat. So there it is, and the vice, Lysingring's Black Gnat. Pretty classic, standard wet fly pattern. Looks a little reminiscent of a North Country spider. Now I'm tying this on a size 12. It's a 1X long, 1X strong barbless wet fly hook. And I am going to use a red thread. Now I realize claret is and crimson are not exactly red, but I didn't have anything that was specifically called that. So we're gonna go with the red and I think we'll be fine with it. So first thing we're going to tie in, I'm doing this debut style. So I'm going to tie in my starling up front. So just a feather like this, not a whole lot. This whole feather, you can't really tell. It's about an inch and a half long. But go ahead and, and strip off everything except, or until you get to where the, the fibers that you want to use are. And I'm going to catch it in, tip pointing forward, just a couple of eye lengths back with the concave side toward me. So there we go, check, make sure that's it. I've got enough room to wrap the hackle in front of that, so I'm fine with that. Now I'll just take a few wraps until you get this caught in, go ahead and snip this off. And now we can take our thread all the way back to where the back of our body is gonna be. And not terribly far back, these aren't really long bodies, Okay, so that is the length of our body there. I'm, I'm gonna take it up just a little bit, and we have some options here what we wanna make the body out of. Now, some of the recipes I've seen said um, crow feathers, you know, just a few barbs of a crow feather. This one is actually from an Ozark turkey right here. The black, this one's actually dyed cinnamon. It's hard to tell, but we're gonna use the black tips right there, and I've got, this is three of those barbs. You can kind of tell by looking at the tips right there. And I'm gonna catch it in with the tips just right here. And now take it back to where the, the back of our body is going to be. Okay, I think maybe one more wrap back. And now this is what Dave Hughes recommended. Pull your thread down, create a little, almost like a dubbing loop, just really a thread loop, I guess we would call it. And I'm going to put a wrap around it right there. Okay. Now, and the, the length of this loop right here is about as long as these fibers. So why I did that, we could just grab them all and then spin them together. Now you don't have to do it this way. You could have um, just left the, the thread out, then wrap the feathers up, and then wrap that thread as a rib. And that's a pretty good look too. I've seen a couple done that way. But eh, I'm just gonna do this like Dave Hughes did. Spin them all together. Now we might not see as much of this red 
poking through when we wrap it up, but I'm gonna be fine with that. We'll see a little bit of red every few wraps or so, but it's not gonna be overpowering. So every couple wraps, I'm just spinning this, this little rope together and then take it a couple more wraps and maybe giving it another little spin right here, right until we get it all the way up to where our thread is. Now a couple wraps to catch that off. And let's go ahead and snip this. Now do I need to put another one back there? Sure, why not? Now let's just pull this back and take our thread right up here to where we're going to stop wrapping this hackle. Now for this one, I'm gonna use these kind of hackle pliers right here, just the little clamps. They're a little bit more delicate and they're not, they're less likely to break your feather. And this starling is, is fairly delicate. Um, you know, kind of like partridge, you can't put a few, any real tight wraps on it. But we're gonna do, I would say three or four, really until I just run out of this feather here. I think that's three. You might be able to get one more here and then catch it off on this side right here. Now, before I take it out of my hackle pliers, I'm just gonna leave it in there. It makes it a little bit easier to snip that off. And now let's just clean up this head a little bit. I'm gonna pull these back and try to get a little flat area here where I can build a head and create some room for a whip finish. Okay, I think that's gonna be a big enough head right there. Let's whip finish it, see if we have any cleanup. And wouldn't you know it, that whip finish trapped one of my fibers going forward, creating a little bit of an ugly head there. So we can either snip that right here or go in there with our singeing tool and burn it or just not worry about it. So there you go, James Lising Ring's Black Gnat. Really simple pattern, not at all hard to tie. You can knock out a dozen of these in less than an hour easily. All right, everybody, thanks for sticking around, especially you tires from Pennsylvania. So Will Daskal reached out to me recently and asked me if I could mention a class he's gonna be offering at Northampton Community College. And since one of my missions here at Savage Flies is to get as many new tires interested in the sport as possible, I told him, sure, I will, I'll announce your class, help you advertise for it. Now this first class starts this July. It's gonna run six consecutive Monday evenings in the Keystone Building on the Monroe campus. Now this will be the first of three progressive classes geared toward a beginning tire, but aimed up through seasoned veteran tires as well. And the instructor, Will Daskal, brings a lot of experience to this class. He grew up on a chicken farm in the Catskills. He's been fly fishing since 1952 and tying since 1956. And he's been friends with and learned tying from some pretty famous folks in the fly tying world. Guys like Al Kochi, Paul Jorgensen, Eric Leiser, Ernie Schweibert, Dick Tallier, even Lee Wolf. So any of you tires out there in Northeast Pennsylvania, the Pocono region or Lehigh Valley, down to Allentown or Bethlehem, even in Northwest New Jersey, take a look at this class. It looks like it's gonna be a great opportunity. And I'll put a link to the college's website in the description of this video. So that's all folks, hope you check it out. And I appreciate y'all watching this video. Take care. We'll see you next time.